Okay, so we're starting today the Gemara <coughs> towards the bottom of the Mem Amud base, three lines from the bottom. So we were learning over here a question that Rabbi said that the uh, Talmidim had when they were learning by the Yeshiva by Rav Huna. So the Gemara brings another Shaila that they asked. There's no connection, but this is another Shaila that they had. When we were learning by Rav Huna, we had the following question. Bar be Rav, a yeshiva student, the Yosef betanisa b'mayla shabbata. He's fasting on Erev Shabbos. Ma'ol ashlumi. Should he complete his fast into Shabbos, all the way till at night? Loi have bi yode. Rav Huna didn't answer. Asoy lekame de Rav Yehuda. They came to Rav Yehuda and they asked him this question. Loi have bi yode. He didn't have an answer either. So Omar Rav, or other Bachas Goyres, or others are Goyres. Omar Rav, nech ze anan. So let's see uh, Abraise to answer this question. The Tanya we learned in Abraise, Tisha B'av Shechali is B'Shabbos. If Tisha B'av falls out on a Shabbos, V'chein Erev Tisha B'av Shechali is B'Shabbos, or Erev Tisha B'av fell out on Shabbos. Oichel V'shoise Kol Tzorka. You can eat and drink as much as you want. Umayla Al Shulchanoi. And you can bring on your table food. Afila Kasudah Shleimah B'Shaita. Even like the Sudah of Shleimah Melech. Even though usually, out of Tisha B'av, when it comes in the afternoon, you're not supposed to drink wine, eat meat. Even though we don't eat already wine and meat from before, but Me'ikra Din, afternoon, you're not supposed to have more than, you, don't, you shouldn't even eat two tafshil in Rashi brings here. But in Shabbos, you can eat Kesuda Shleim B'Shaitai. The Rabbi would always quote this Gemara. Then get the Tisha B'av Shechal B'Shabbos, that other Rabbi should be makpid and show the, the Shabbos to eat as, as much as you want until the very end of uh, Shabbos. Chali is Tisha B'Av, Be'erev Shabbos. How about if Tisha B'Av falls out in Erev Shabbos? Which is a very unusual thing. Today it that, 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 that doesn't happen with the Kvias of the Luach. But if it happens that it fell out on Erev Shabbos, so you're fasting on Friday. Mevi'en like Kebeitze v'oichel, so at the end of the day, you bring food, like the amount of a Beitze, and you eat. Kedei shelo yekonis l'Shabbos keshehu mo'one. You shouldn't enter into the Shabbos with the pain of the fast, so you eat a kibetza before Shabbos. So here, this answers the question they had. Tisha B'av, out of Shabbos, so you're not supposed to fast all the way into Shabbos. You have to eat something before. Talk to Gemara Vayte, Tanya, we learned in Abra Yisam, Rab Yehud, Pa Machas, Yinu Yeshim, Lefnei Rabbi Kiva. We were once sitting in front of Rabbi Kiva. The Tisha B'av Shechali is bad of Shabbos, Oya. And it was such a kind of a kvies, a seldom kvies. The Tisha B'av fell out and out of Shabbos. They brought him an egg, which is uh, partially fried. The gama, and he swallowed it, he ate it. He didn't add any salt. The Bryce explains. It's not that he needed it, he wasn't hungry. He wanted to show the Talmidim halacha. He wanted to show them the halacha that they shouldn't fast into Shabbos. So therefore, he ate it. So this is the opinion also of Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Yaisi Aymer, Rabbi Yaisi argues. Rabbi Yaisi says, Mas'ana umashlem. Tisha B'av falls out of Shabbos. You fast, you complete your fast all the way until Shabbos. Amal and Rabbi Yaisi. So Rabbi Yaisi explains his opinion. Rabbi Yaisi tells them, Iyatamaydimli. Don't you agree to me? But Tisha B'av shachaliyah is be'echad b'Shabbos. If Tisha B'av comes out on Sunday, so, when do you stop eating for the fast on Matzah Tisha B'Av? Shemaf Sik You have to stop eating already on Shabbos. You can't stop eating right by Ben Hashemosh, because you don't know exactly when the, the, the fast begins. So, you have to stop eating already on Shabbos itself. So, just like you stop eating on Shabbos for Tisha B'Av, so too, out of Tisha B'Av, Shechali is B'Shabbos, you can fast all the way into, uh, in, uh, into the night, into Shabbos. Amrulai, so they answered him. Aval amalehem, Amrulai, the Chachamim said to him, Aval, you're right, it's true. Amrulahem, but he says to them, Ma li li konis, so Amrulahem, so Rabbi Yaisi says to them, Ma li li konis ba kishu mu'une, Ma li lotis mena ne kishu mu'une. So what's the difference if you're leaving Shabbos and at the end of Shabbos you're beginning your fast on Shabbos? Or on Erev Shabbos, when you enter into the Shabbos, you enter the Shabbos in the middle of a fast, then you're, you're still fasting. What's the difference? 
So they answered him, Amru Lai, the Chachamim answered the Rabbi Yaisi, no, it's not the same thing. If you're saying when it comes to going out of Shabbos and you start fasting when it's still Shabbos, he ate the entire day. He spent Shabbos and he ate. Right? He begins fasting by the end of Shabbos going into Tisha B'Av the next day. But you want to say that a person should complete his fast on Friday, entering into Shabbos without eating at all. Over here, the person is fasting the whole entire day, is entering into Shabbos with a fast of the whole day. So that, the Chachamim did not agree to Rabbi Yaisi. And Ola said, Are we passing like Rabbi Yaisi? That on Friday you could fast and complete your fast all the way to Shabbos. It's not, it's not covered of sh- for, for Shabbos. not covered for Shabbos to go into Shabbos with a, with a atzvos and mo'una. To come into Shabbos with a simcha. Not uh, mo'una, with tainug. So Taka actually says that the shaila that the Bar Beirav, Yosef the Tanisa, the Maile Shabbata, the reason why they fasted at of Shabbos was Taka for this reason, in order to eat the Shabbos Suda with the But the question that they were meant to ask is, okay, you talk about eating Friday to have a more geschmack in the food on Shabbos, but still, should you, should you eat something so it shouldn't mamish be you're walking into Shabbos with a fast, coming from a fast into Shabbos is not, is not proper, so you eat with the but episodes to ask and fire them. On this psak of Ola, on me of Dinan Kerav Yaisi, do we talk a do like Rav Yaisi? Ramini, I'll ask a question from Abraise. It says in the Braise, Ain Geyser in Taina Salat Sibor, Beroshi Chadoshim, you don't make a Gzeire on a Tzibor to fast on a Shchaydish if there's any reason you have to fast. Bechaneke, Bepurim, you don't, you're not Geyser a fast on any of these days. Vim is chilu, but if they began fasting before, as Rashi here says, sometimes they establish a fast and they start fasting, let's say, uh, 20 days before, even 30 days before, and they're already fasting from before, and they're fasting many days, so then, aim of seeking. You're not mafsik to fast. They can fast also on Chaneke, Purim, on Eshchidosh. Divrei, Rabbi Gamliel. This is what Rabbi Gamliel says. So Omer Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir adds to this and says, Ah, but Omer Rabbi Gamliel ain't mafsikin. Rabbi Gamliel says, if they were fasting from before, you're not mafsik. But maida hoya, but he was maida she'ein mashlimin. If you're fasting on Chanukah and Purim, you can't fast the entire day. Or even Rosh Chodesh, you shouldn't fast the entire day. You should eat something. V'chein b'tishabav shechaliyah is bad of Shabbos. And then he said also the same thing in the name of Rabbi Gamliel regarding tishabav shechaliyah is bad of Shabbos, that you shouldn't fast the entire day. You should eat something before Shabbos. So here we see, not like Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Gamliel held, like we said before, that you have to eat something before Shabbos. And then the Gemara brings another b'raise to prove that they actually did like Rabbi Gamliel. V'tani will learn another b'raise, la'acha p'tirasi shalab shem Gamliel. After Rabbi Shem Gamliel passed away, so what happened? Nichnas or others are going to say Rabbi Gamliel, right? Because the story, the, the shit that we mentioned before, that you should uh, break the fast, was in the name of Rabbi Gamliel. So Nichnas Rabbi Yeshua lahofer es dvara. Rabbi Yeshua came into the Bismedrish and he wanted to disprove this opinion of Rabbi Gamliel that you could fast the whole day going into Shabbos. Amad Rabbi Yechen and Benuri al Raglo. Rabbi Yechen and Benuri got up and said, "Va'ama." I see that the body should follow the head. Meaning Rabbi Gamliel, he was the Nasi, he was the head, and he already established the halacha, that you, you have to break your fast before, so we're going to follow what he said. So, Now you want to be mevatel his words that he we already established in his lifetime. Yeshua ain't shaymalach. We're not going to listen to you. We are ready Paschal like Rabbi Gamliel. And nobody got up after Rabbi Yechon and Venuri. No one questioned this. So we see here clearly in the Braise that they Paschal like Rabbi Gamliel. And even when Rabbi Yeshua tried to be mevatel it, they didn't allow to be mevatel the opinion of Rabbi Gamliel. So the question of here is, how did Ulla before Paschal like Rabbi Yaisi? It says that you could fast all the way into Shabbos. So the Gemara bedoyrish Rabbi Gamliel of the Rabbi Gamliel. During Rabbi Gamliel's generation, they take did like Rabbi Gamliel. But bedoyrish of Rabbi Yaisi in Rabbi Yaisi's generation that lived after him, of the Rabbi Yaisi. 
they did like Rabbi Yaisi, and they, they paskin that you could fast all the way into Shabbos. We'll see soon at the end of the Patek, this is how we talk about paskin, that a fast that comes out in Shabbos, we have it sometimes in Asar B'tavis. Asar B'tavis is the only fast that could come out in Erev Shabbos. And if it comes out on Erev Shabbos, it's going to be this year that way. Yeah. So Asar B'tavis, Erev Shabbos, you fast all the way to Shabbos. You don't break your fast before. Huh? Never could come out on Shabbos. It doesn't come out on Erev Shabbos. Erev Shabbos it does. Huh? Tisha B'Av comes out on Shabbos, but it never will come out on Erev Shabbos. <coughs> Frek, the Gemara, what did you just say here? That in the, the Rabbi Gamliel's generation, they followed what, the, what Rabbi Gamliel said. Is this true that in the generation of Rabbi Gamliel, Yitake did like Rabbi Gamliel? We learned in Abraise, Omer Rabbi Laza ben Sadoik, Ani mibnei sanov ben Benyamin. I come from the family of Bnei Sanov that comes from Benyamin. What's unique about this family? So Rashi brings over here in the time of the second base of Mikdosh. So they had different families that would donate the wood for the carbonus, the carbona eitzim. And the day that was established for them to bring the carbona eitzim was a yontif. It was mamish like a yontif for them. They were not a lot of fast on that day. It was like a yontif. So he's, and then they established this yontif even for later generations. Anyone that came from that family, the Yontif continued, not only <laughs> the Shasmaisa then, but even later generations. That Mishpacha, it was considered to be Mamasha Yontif. So, when was the Yontif of this family? As we'll see in the Hemshech of the story here, the Yontif of this family, Bnei Sanov, was on, uh, on Yud Av, day after Tisha B'av. So, Pa Machas Chol Tisha B'av Li is So, once Tisha B'av was on Shabbos. Vidochinu Lacha Shabbos. And they pushed off the fast to a, a, a city bav, which was usually their yomtiv. Vihisanino boy. So although it was their yomtiv, but because they pushed off Tisha bav, so they fasted. But Veloyishlam nuhu. We didn't fast the entire Tisha bav. Vipnei she yomtiv shalonu haya. Because it's our yomtiv. And therefore they didn't, they didn't fast the whole day. This was what Rabbi Lazar ben Sadiq said in his times, which was also in the time of Rabbi Gamliel. So now the Gemara is Medayik. Taime the yomtiv. The reason why they didn't fast the entire day is because it was Yom Tif. That day itself is their Yom Tif. <laughs> ha, Erev Yom Tif. But a, if it would have been Tisha B'Av, Erev Yom Tif. Erev their Yom Tif, which was on a Sidi B'Av. Mashlimin. They do fast the whole entire Tisha B'Av all the way into their Yom Tif. So we see over here that uh, they pass in, that you can, like Rabbi Yaisi, that you fast all the way into the Yom Tif. Not like <coughs> Rabbi Gamliel. Huh? Even if it comes down on, uh, this is on Shabbos. No, 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 nothing to do with Shabbos. Nothing to do with Shabbos now. Now we're talking about their Yom Tif. They had a special Yom Tif established for their family because of the carbon Eitzim of that day. The only reason they weren't mashlim the fast is if it was on a city of itself. So then they weren't mashlim because that was their Yom Tif. But on the end of their Yom Tif, out of their Yom Tif, they were not mashlim. They, they, again, out of Yom Tif, they were mashlim. They were mashlim. So that's the connection to Shabbos, meaning the same. Same thing, on out of Shabbos, so they hold that uh, you could be mashlim, like Rabbi Yaisi. So the Gemara, it's not the same thing. You can't compare this Yom Tif of theirs, that was um, the Rabban and the Yom Tif established for this family, to a regular Shabbos and Yom Tif. Amar Avine, Shani Yom Tif Shal this is a yontif mid Rabbanon that they established for these families. You see that you see over here in this itself, on this yontif itself, when when Tisha B'av was pushed off to Asiri Ba'av, they did fast on this yontif itself, although not the entire day, but they did fast. On Shabbos itself, on yontif itself, you never fast, even Shois either. So this is not such a de yontif. So therefore, Mashlim in Boy Arviyais, Erev, this yontif mid you fast the entire day all the way into the yontif. But uh, on a regular Shabbos, Hoyel the Amos Anam Bashois, Shabbos itself, you never fast on Shabbos, even just for a few hours on Shabbos, you're not supposed to fast. Amish Limim Boy Arvies. So on Ed of Shabbos, according to Rabbi Gamliel, you're not allowed to fast all the way into Shabbos, you have to break your fast before the Shabbos. Omar Rav Yasef, Loish Mieli Hosh Maita. I did not hear this halach of Ula, that you're passing like Rabbi Yasi, that uh, you're allowed to fast all the way into Shabbos. I didn't hear this. You didn't hear this. You told us this halacha like Rabbi Yaisi. And this is again, we had this a few times already. Mentioned Rabbi Yaisif got very sick and he forgot a lot of his learning. And Abaya reminded him things that he said. So he's reminding him. And you told it to us, Taka, on this b'raise that we quoted before. 
the whole Hemshech of the Brayse that was quoted before, that you don't make a Tainus, not on a Shchedish, not on Chanukah, not on Purim, and if you began, you could be Mafsik, the whole Hemshech we had before. V'omret Allah, and then Rav Yosef, you told us, Omar Rav Yudah, Omar Rav, Zu Divrei Rav Meir, Shom Mishum Rav Gamliel. This is all, Rav Meir said in the name of Rav Gamliel, that on Erev Shabbos, you're supposed to break your fast and not fast all the way into Shabbos. Avo Chachomim Oimrim, Misana El Mashlem. In the name of the Chachomim, you said, not only the name of Rav Yaisi, in the name of the Chachomim, which means we Paschal like the Chachomim, that you can fast all the way to Shabbos. My love, so this detail over here, that Chachomim say, Misana El Mashlem, my love Akulu. Don't you think it goes on to all the details that were mentioned in the Braise there? The Braise there spoke about Shchedish, Chaneke, Purim, and also of a person that fasts on Erev Shabbos. So it doesn't only go regarding Hanukkah and Purim, wouldn't we say that it also goes on this that it says that uh, Rabbi Gamliel said you can't be mashlum you fast on Erev Shabbos and Chachamim argue and say you could be mashlum you fast on Erev Shabbos. So the Gemara Loi, not necessarily. The Chachamim are not arguing on everything. A Hanukkah or Purim, they're only arguing regarding Hanukkah and Purim and saying that once you began fasting from before you could be mashlum on Hanukkah and Purim. Or Hanami It makes sense that Rav only said this, Beniget to Hanukkah and Purim, but not Beniget to uh, Erev Shabbos. These like a daito chakulu. If Rav said this clearly, that there's a chachamim, and we pass like the chachamim, that on Erev Shabbos you can fast all the way to Shabbos. So haboy menei Rabbe merav Yehuda. Rabbe asked this question from Rav Yehuda, as we had in the beginning of the whole Gemara here. They brought this question to Rav Yehuda whether you're allowed to fast all the way to Shabbos. And he didn't answer him. Why didn't he answer him? Rav said the Fadish in the name of the Chacham that you could fast all the way to Shabbos. So the Gemara says, And according to you, if that's your problem, if that's your question, said in the name of Rav Huna, that the Halach is you can fast all the way to Shabbos. So Rav Huna said this. The question is, but how boy mine rabbi me Rav Huna? The beginning of the whole sugi here was that Rav asked this question from Rav Huna vole and he didn't answer. That was the whole beginning here. That they had this question when they were in Yeshiva by Rav Huna, and Rav Huna didn't answer them. But here, Mazutra himself said that you could be mashlam all the way till Shabbos. So what happened over here? So what's the answer? Ella, the answer is, ha mekame dushama. Before he heard this statement of Rav, he didn't know the answer. And then later he heard what Rav said, and then he answered, and Mazurta said in the name of Rav Hone that you could fast all the way to Shabbos. So Hachanami, the same thing also regarding this Braise that we learned here. <coughs> Sorry. This that um, he asked Rav Yehuda the question, and Rav Yehuda didn't know the answer, is before he heard it in the name of Rav. And Holobasad Shama. And then Rav Yehuda said this in the name of Rav, and he already heard in the name of Rav that you could fast all the way to Shabbos. So the Gemara concludes, Darash Marzutra Mishmei de Ravhone, that, that um, Ravhone, Rav Marzutra Dash in the name of Ravhone, the Halache, Mis'ane no Mashlimen. The Halache is that when you're fasting out of Shabbos, you can fast all the way to Shabbos. There's actually a Machlekes Rishenim about this, whether the Pshad of the Gemara is that you could fast all the way to Shabbos, or the Gemara is saying is that you should fast all the way into Shabbos, in times when you're like Tisha B'av that we spoke about before. Yeah. Hadron Allah Bachel Ma'arven. We have this, so when we have this case, only today, only um, a sort of potatoes. Fast all the way to Shabbos, of course. Also, Huh? Kaddisha? Falls out on a Friday, so they fast. Yeah. Zog the Mishnah. We start a new Pedic. It's also a continuation of the halachas of Eid of Tchumen. And here it speaks about a person that left this Tchum on Shabbos. What happens then? Talk to Mishnah, Misha Itziyu, Nochrem, Goyim, by force, took a person out of the Tchum Shabbos. Oi, Ruach Ra, or he was overcome by a bad spirit. He was something, he went out of his mind and he went out of the Tchum on Shabbos. So then, Ein Leel Dal Damas. Even though it was against his will, he came out of the Tchum. He only has Dal Damas that he's allowed to walk around in. He's not allowed to move out of his Dal Damas. Once you go out of Tchum Shabbos, that's the only space you're allowed to move around in. The mockim of a person is Dal Damas. That's what the Gemara says in many, many places. And uh, so the Rebbe brings in many places, when you get to the Sinyan of Dal Damas, that the Nishama of a person. The neshama of a person is nespashet in Dal Damas. There's the different madregas of the neshama. 
And the, until the makif of the neshama, the yechida of the neshama is nispashit and dal damis, and therefore the uh, place of a person is dal damis. If those goyim that forced him out of the tchom brought him back into the tchom, so then kid lo yotza. It's as if he never went out, and he can go around the whole city as much as he wants. They brought him, these goyim took him out of the tchom, but they brought him now to another city. They put him into a place that has a mechitza around it. It's a reshus a place that's usually designated for animals there. But he's in a reshus a now. So is he also only allowed to walk in Dal Damas? Or could he go around as much as he wants, as long as he's in that Rishus HaYachid? So, Machleikis. Since he's in Rishus HaYachid, he can go around as much as he wants in there. They took him out of his Tchum. Uh, so, even though he's in Rishus HaYachid, you could only go around Dal Damas. So, there was a story, Maise Shubo Mipal Darsen. The Chachamim came on a boat from this city. <coughs> so they were already on the boat, and it came already into the port, and they were still on the boat, Shabbos. And the boat, just the wind blew it, and it took off from the port. <coughs> and it went back into the water, back into the ocean, out of the Tchum Shabbos. So it's now an interesting Tzach, there's a big discussion here in the Mepharshim. How are they in a boat so close to Shabbos? But that klal, you're not allowed to be in a boat before Shabbos, especially it says you're not allowed to go on a boat. We learned in Shabbos, Masech the Shabbos, you're not allowed to go within three days. So why were they uh, on a boat over here? You could be on a boat. Huh? Could and be a chanami. So the huh? On a boat the whole week. Yeah, yeah all month. month. <coughs> okay. And a chanami, yeah. And then they, uh, but they came over here. They came to the port before Shabbos. Right. It says they were on the boat. Uh-huh. So maybe they should have came earlier before. Yeah, okay, so Kopanim, they, they were on the boat before Shabbos, and then the boat just took off, and on Shabbos, they went out of the Tchum. So what happens? Now they're on a boat, they're surrounded with the walls of the boat, so they're in a Rishus HaYachid. So this is the same Machlaikis that we had before. So, like their opinion, they walked around in the entire boat, because even though they're out of the Tchum Shabbos, but they're in a boat. They didn't move out of the Dal Damas. They wanted to be Machmer, like the other opinion, not to go out of the Dal Damas. <coughs> Another story the Gemara says, So once a boat arrived before Shabbos and the boat didn't actually enter into the port until it was already dark. So they said to Rabbi Gamliel, can we, can we disembark from this boat? Amalehem, in other words, they weren't sure whether this boat already entered into the Tchum before Shabbos. They arrived after it was dark, so they weren't sure if they have to stay where they are, not allowed to go out of their Daldamis, or not allowed to go off of the boat. Amalehem, so he said to them, you could at them, you're allowed to go off the boat. I was looking with my telescope. We were already within the Tchum of the city before Shabbos, and therefore we did not go from out of the Tchum when Shabbos began. So therefore you're allowed to get off the boat. Zok to Gemara, it mentioned in the Mishnah, a Ruach Ra. So the Gemara is going to say a few things that are connected to the singing of a Ruach Ra. Tan Rabbanu, we learned in the Braise, Gimul Dvarim, Ma'avir, Nesa Adam, Al Daitoi, Val Das Koinoi. There are three things that take a person's mind. Take away a person's whole person's mind, take it away, takes away. Valdas Kainai takes the person's mind away from the Ebishta. Veiluhain, Oivde Kachavim, when you have a guy that is, is uh, oppressing you. Ruach Ra, person is overcome by a bad spirit that he goes out of his mind. Vidiktuke Anias, and when a person is very poor, Diktuke Anias. Diktuke Anias means a person is so poor, Mamish doesn't have a penny to his pocket. So these are the things that are Mavirinus Adam Al Daitoi Valdas Kainai. It's interesting, I saw a pshat, the Sma actually says, Shulchan Aruch, the Sma says that the pshat of Diktuki and Iyas is, he says, where, where do you find this aloshan, when you get to a person that's poor, this aloshan of Diktuke? What's the sin of Diktuke? So the Gemara, he brings a Gemara in Baba Metziah that says that if there's a, an Aveda that you lost, and then you find your Aveda, and there's also an Aveda that your father lost, which one do you have to take first? So it says that uh, your Aveda comes before the Aveda of your father. If you don't have anything else if you were to eat or whatever, your Aveda comes before the Aveda of your father. But nevertheless, the Gemara says over there that you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't be medactic on yourself so much, and uh, you should, you should uh, give your father's Aveda back first. And if you can be medactic to take yours first, and that itself will make you poor. 
So the Gdukei Anias, he says, a person that's medactic and such a thing, he doesn't do Lufnim Meshur Sadin, he comes to Anias. So the Gemara Lamein Afkimina. Lamein Afkimina to know that these are the things that take a person Mavirin Es Adam Idaitel and Das Kainai. Lamiboy Rachma Laya, that a person should especially daven, even if, so, if this does not, even though a person has to daven for everything. But here this, something even before it happens, a person should daven about this, that it shouldn't happen, because this is something that will be my veradam al daite vedas kaina. Sokta gemara vaiter, gimel, there are three things, ein royin penei gehenem, that if you experience them, you don't see penei gehenem. Elohein, dekduke anies, poor, poor to this extent, dekduke anies, v'chaylin mayan, a person that has stomach pains, Varashus. Rashus means you have either government or collection agencies that are collecting money from you and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big pain. So these are the kinds of pains that a person is not raya pnei gehenem. V'yashayimrim af mishiyashlo Also a person that's married to a wife that's a bad wife. V'yidoch, what's the other opinion? Why didn't they count this one? Ishara mitzvah legarsha. That's not that's something that you should take care of. It's, mitzvah, it's a mitzvah to be megarsha. Vidoch, but the other opinion says zimnin. It's possible the You can't afford it to, to be megarsha. It's a big suba, so you can't afford to be megarsha. You know, I mean, there could be another situation where a person can't be megarsha's wife. It's lebanim mina. Mina. He has children with her, so he, he doesn't want to be megarsha. V'leimotzi megarsha lo. Why are we mentioning over here these things that a person experiences them? It is not Roya Pnei Gehenim. Le Kabuli Me'ave. The Nafkemina is that when a person experiences, he should know of what this is doing, that it's, it's cleaning him from his Avedis, and he'll be no, he won't go into Gehenim, so he should accept him with love. Shloi Shameisin Keshehem Mesapren. There are three people that can die suddenly, even while they're still talking. In other words, they still have a lot of energy and they're talking, but it's a sickness that will cause a person to die suddenly. A person that has a sickness in the stomach, some kind of a sickness that causes a, a sudden death. A woman that gives birth could experience sudden death. Some other kind of sickness, Rashi here says it's a some kind of a sickness in the mouth that could cause a sudden death. Why, what's enough committed to know this? To prepare for them what they need. To prepare for them the tachrichim to know that this is a kind of a sickness that could be very sudden. Okay, the Gemara now goes back to the halacha of Eid of Tchumen. Omer Av Nachman Omer Shmuel Yotzal Edas, a person that went out of the Eid of the out of his Tchum intentionally. Ein leyel arbamis. He's not allowed to walk out of his dal damis. Frek the Gemara Pshita. That's obvious. Hash the Mishay Tziu Nochrim in our Mishnah it said that even if he was taken out of his Tchum by force, goyin. Ein leyel dal damis. He only has four amis. Yotzal Edas mi boye. If he walked out of his Tchum intentionally, you, do you have to say that he's uh, not allowed to go out of his Dal Damas? Elo, Eime, Chazal Ladas. What Rav Nachman meant to say is that he uh, came back in Ladas. He, he went out by force and he came back into his Tchum Ladas, so Eime, Yala Dal Damas. He only has four Amas. This we also see clearly in the Mishnah. It said in the Mishnah that, that he was taken out by force and then Hechziru Nochrim Kilu Layotza. If the guy brought him back, it's as if he, was ne- he never went out of the Tchum. Hechziru, who the kilo layotza? So you clearly see from the Mishnah, only if the guy brought him back, it's as if he never went out. Avol haitziyu, nochrim, if guy took him out, v'chazal adas, and he on his own, went back into his Tchum, enli ele dal damas. So it's only dal damas. So what was the Chiddush of Rav Nachman? Elo the Gemara says, he must have meant the third thing. Yotzal adas, he went out on his own. And Vichziru Nochrim and Goyim fought by force, brought him back into the Tchum. Ein Yala Dal Damis, he only has Dal Damis to walk and not more. Frekti Gemara, that's also not a Chiddush. We also see this from what the Mishnah says. Anami Tanina, Hoitziyu Vehechziru, the Mishnah says, the Goyim took him out and the Goyim brought him, ba- brought him back in. Kiilu Layotza. And then it's as if he didn't go out and he could walk out of his Dal Damis. Vahitziyu Vehechziru, so only, so what do you see over here? Only Hitziyu Vehechziru, if they took him out and they brought him back in, who the kilo la yotza? Only then it's as if he never went out. Ava yotza ladas, if he went out ladas on his own, even if the guy brought him back in by force, loy, he could only go dal damis, not more. So the Gemara says, no. We can say in our Mishnah, it's not 100% a We could have learned different shot in our Mishnah. 
Until now, the Gemara is learning Pshat in our Mishnah that the Hoitziyuhu and the Hechziruhu is one case. The Goyim took him out and then the Goyim brought him back in. But the Gemara says, Mao de Teimel, it's not in Katani. Maybe you have to divide it into two cases. Mi Shoitziyu Nochrim, Goyim forced him out, that's one case. And then the Chazal Adas, he came back in willingly. Because he came back in willingly, so therefore he only has Dal Damas. But then the next case of the Mishnah, when it says Hechziru, maybe that's a separate case. And you could say, Aval Yotzel Adas, if he went out willingly, Vechziruhu Nochrim, and the Goyim brought him back into his Tchum. So now the fact is he's back in his Tchum, then Kilula Yotzel. Maybe on that the Mishnah is saying, it's as if he never went out, and he could walk more than Dal Damas. So you could divide the Mishnah into two different cases. Kamash Malon. So that's the Chiddush of what Rav Nachman said, that you have to read the Mishnah as one, and therefore if you uh, went out Ladas, even though the Goyim brought you back in, you can't walk out of your Dal Damas. They asked Rabbi the question, So a person is out of his Tchum, he only has Dal Damas, but he needs to use the bathroom, he has to go to a private place, and he doesn't have where to go in his Dal Damas, is he allowed to use the bathroom? So he answered them, and we had this a few times already. Kovid Abriyas is something that the Teireh says is so important, and even a Loisa say also Teireh. Like when again, what's the source of this? By an Aveda, Loisucha Lis Alem, a Zokin Ve'en Lufichveda, an older person, and it's not uh, respectful for him to go and tend to this Aveda, he doesn't have to. So we see that the Teireh is Makvid on Kovid Abriyas. So the same thing over here, over here we're talking about an Isr of Tchum, which is an Isr of Rabbanon. So for Kovid Abriyas, a person can go out of his Dal Damis and, uh, and then do what he has to for Kovid Abriyas. Omri Nerdoi. So Nerdoi now says, if so, if the person is going to be wise, he has to use the bathroom. He's allowed to go out of his Dal Damis already, so he can go back into his Tchum. And now he has the right, yes, he can do it with the Shos, to go back in his Tchum. The key in the all, all. At the rain gechapt, as the rain gegang gets zurück in the tchum, at the rain gechapt, and then he's going to be able to be in back in his tchum and walk around wherever he wants. Two things going out of the daladamis. That's another issue. The, and then going into the tchum. There's two yeah. things over here. Yeah, but still he they. Says they were mad him to go into the tchum. They were mad him to go out of his daladamis. Right. To, 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 to go back into the tchum. Uh, right. I don't know if it's an issue of neatsmai. This is to leave your tchum. This is to leave your tchum. And once you left your tchum, once you left the tchum, now chacham will geize, you shouldn't leave your dal damis. But I don't think there's an iser to go back into your tchum. But etzim, there's no iser. The only problem is not to go out of your dal damis. So if you're smart, he goes back, he's go out of his dal damis, goes into the tchum. And once I reingechapt, I reingechapt. So here you see this concept, I'm all kemen, I reingechapten. You have to be a pikech, I reingechapten. No, the will help him, I reingechapten. He will say, a pikech, I reingechapten. I have a good year. The gashmi is, the beruchni is, the cholam etzarech. Ksiva Ksimeteva, Shana Teva Musuka.